compared to many of its sister moons, Enceladus sports few craters. And the largest is relatively small, only 22 miles across. Like Europa, Enceladus has a finely textured landscape with at least five different kinds of terrain, a sign that it's frequently remade by geologic activity. Its fractured and wrinkled surface is most obvious around its south pole. But there's something else going on down here among these ridges. Enceladus lies outside of Saturn's bright inner rings, in the wide and diffuse E-ring. With Cassini's camera pointed at just the right angle to the sun, Saturn's E-ring lit up. Enceladus is the bright object in the center of the frame. What is all this hazy stuff made of? Could it be coming from the moon itself? The plan had been to let Cassini tour the Saturn system until the middle of 2008. But the mission was clearly too successful and too intriguing to let it end. And the Cassini science team suspected they were onto something big. So they went to work, plotting new orbital paths, building a new target list, preparing to have another go at Enceladus. They set the spacecraft on course for a set of close flybys of its south pole, down to as near as 25 miles above its surface. This is what Cassini saw. Plumes of vapor rising out of the ice. Scientists began to think of them as geysers, much like those in geologic hotspots on Earth. If the Cassini team could find out just what these jets are made of, they might have some major clues to what's going on deep inside Enceladus. And if there truly is a liquid ocean, they might just find out what it's made of. To get some answers, Cassini sampled particles that make up the E-ring. It found crystals of water, and within them, it detected the presence of a simple compound well known on Earth, salt. Salt dissolved in water tastes like evidence to a scientist. Evidence that friction from a rocky core jostled by Saturn's gravity is warming a reservoir of liquid water below the icy surface of Enceladus and sending that water bursting through. Now, to be accurate, Enceladus jets could possibly form without liquid water. And, even if they began as liquid, they may boil up out of a few water-filled caverns rather than a huge ocean. But if this tiny moon's water spouts do originate in a sizable subterranean sea, the possibilities for life throughout the galaxy may be that much greater. How amazing. Almost 900 million miles from the Sun, far beyond the orbit of Earth, and far outside what many call the Goldilocks Zone for living things, this distant little moon might just harbor the conditions needed for chemistry to become biology. And so we continue to mine the kingdom of Saturn for knowledge and images, and not just from space. For eight years, astronomers at the Gemini North Telescope in Hawaii had been monitoring the infrared light streaming in from the Saturn system. Looking at Titan, they saw, for the very first time, evidence of a massive and unlikely storm erupting over what's thought to be a vast equatorial desert. If nothing else, it shows just how much we still have to learn about these mystery worlds. Meanwhile, Cassini kept adding to its unprecedented photographic collection. With Saturn now at its farthest point from the Sun, the angle of the light allows the Sun to cast long shadows across the rings. And out popped discoveries, like this little moon never before seen. Or these that seem to have punched right through the F-ring.
We don't yet know if Saturn's moons have ignited the spark of life. But since the time of Galileo, they have certainly ignited our imaginations.